عليكم today the second part of VE ECMO it will cover cannulation and circuit component as a quick revision for more details you can go for previous lecture regarding the circuit component the first type of VE ECMO is a peripheral, peripheral VE it has two types for insertion percutaneous or through vascular cutdown Percutaneous can be through modified Slidinger technique, and the advantage of this technique is lower bleeding, less risk of infection, more rapid insertion. Some limitation is presence of peripheral vascular disease, presence of stenosis, or thrombus. The second type is vascular cutdown, and it has an advantage we can do dual cannulation of the peripheral vein and artery at the same time. Ultrasonography can be used for the cannulation and guiding initial needle insertion. The first part in ECMO will be drainage cannula, which is a venous cannula in VA ECMO. Its size will be ranging from 19 to 25 French. The insertion site can be femoral vein, right internal jugular vein, or subclavian vein. The drainage plot will be from severe vena cava, right atrium, and inferior vena cava. The inferior cannula has end and side hole. If the end is obstructed, so the side hole will allow for the drainage. The second part in peripheral VA ECMO is arterial cannula or arterial cannula. The size of the cannula ranging from 15 to 24 French. Insertion site commonly will be the femoral artery. The end of the cannula can be terminated in a common femoral artery or common iliac or distal abdominal aorta. Larger arterial cannula will provide good flow but will lead to more limb ischemia. Small arterial cannula lead less bleeding, less limb ischemia but may have problem with the flow. We should note that if we inserted a peripheral VA ECMO, we should have reperfusion cannula which is mandatory and is recommended during the insertion. This is demonstration for peripheral VA ECMO. The blood is taken peripherally uh, through the drainage cannula from femoral vein, then pushed by the pump into peripherally to femoral artery, and then from femoral artery will push into the aorta. The blood will be pushed in retrograde to uh, its pushing by the heart into the descending aorta. So ejecting heart will push the blood in the opposite direction to the blood pushed by the ECMO. This picture is uh, demonstrating the presence of limb ischemia due to uh, improper insertion for uh, or improper sizing for a reperfusion cannula. In the uh, limb who has uh, return uh, return cannula or arterial cannula in peripheral VA. This video for uh, exchange of reperfusion cannula. This is not functioning one. We can see the lower limb ischemia, the low tissue oxygen saturation. So now we will go for uh, exchange reperfusion cannula on the guide wire. Why, what is the idea of reperfusion cannula? Reperfusion cannula provides blood supply for the lower limb, which is obstructed by the arterial cannula in the femoral vein. So, we'll take the blood from your connector of the arterial cannula and go to the, put the blood through your connection into the superficial femoral artery. Superficial femoral artery will supply the lower limb. And here we can see after the insertion of the new reperfusion cannula, how there, there is improvement in the lower limb uh, color and uh, the improvement in oxygen saturation uh, after uh, opening of this clamp. of peripheral V ECMO is increased left ventricular afterload. This is be why? Because there is re-injection of oxygenated blood in the opposite direction to the blood coming from ejecting heart. So this in the all of them will be met in the descending aorta. That will increase the left ventricular afterload. In 10 to 20% of the patient will have 
severe hydrostatic pulmonary edema. And this is edema also can be aggravated by mitral rigor, which induced by left ventricular dilatation. What are the risk factors for left ventricular distension, or how can we expect that there will be left ventricular uh, distension or increasing in afterload? If there is high pulmonary venous return to the left atrium, there is failure of opening of aortic uh, valve. Uh, this is having on severe left ventricular impairment or excessively high uh, systemic vascular resistance. Also, in presence of aortic valve incompetence, aortic rigor, uh, this will, all of these can be as a predictor for left ventricular uh, distension. The second negative effect of peripheral VA ECMO is Harlequin syndrome, or known as North-South syndrome, or dual circulation. Okay, when there is a re an area of water jet within the aorta where the ECMO oxygenated blood from femoral artery made the lower oxygenated blood from the embedded lung during peripheral VA ECMO. Here we can demonstrate that polysaturated blood from ECMO made the deoxygenated blood from the ventricle. The location of mixing point, which is motor shed point, depending on the ejection fraction of left ventricle. In severely impaired left ventricle, we can see that it will be proximal in uh, ascending uh, aorta or in the aortic arch. But as long as the ventricle gain uh, contraction, so it will go more distal. Here another demonstration for uh, Harlequin syndrome or South syndrome where the ejecting heart started to eject more uh, for the blood. So the deoxygenated blood will go to the brain. So the upper part of the body will be deoxygenated and the lower part of the body become oxygenated blood. And this is a problem. The brain will not have enough oxygen in this case. This is, this is simplified diagram taken from a Korean circulation journal showing the interaction between the native heart and the ECMO flow. If we see the first part of the diagram, we will see that there is low cardiac flow and high ECMO flow. So what will happen? There will be stages in the cardiac chamber and ascending aorta, so the risk of stroke will increase. The second part of the diagram, we will see there is high good native cardiac flow and low ECMO flow, so the, the risk of stroke will decrease. But on the other side, we can have differential hypoxemia if the, if the lung not well functioning. And this means we need uh, anticoagulation, especially in high ECMO flow, to avoid stasis in the uh, native uh, cardiac chamber. Of VA ECMO is central VA ECMO. The classic one is done post sternotomy, post cardiopulmonary bypass, so the drainage cannula will be in right heart circulation and severe vena cava or right atrium. The return cannula in the ascending aorta through the opening, opening, open, opening of, the of the sternum. The, the main advantage of this avoid uh, differential hypoxemia or uh, north south syndrome. The second type is uh, that can be done, a uh, non-classic type or modified central type, can be done without sternotomy. So the drainage cannula will be femoral uh, vein or internal jugular, whatever. Uh, the return cannula will be inserted through subclavian artery uh, and axillary artery and innominate artery. This type will ensure good perfusion with cerebral circulation with oxygenated blood easily ambulation of the patient. There is less risk for aortic root thrombosis or LV distension. This simplified uh, figure for uh, central VA ECMO from the blood uh, coming out from the right atrium and return and the, uh, and the return cannula with oxygenated blood return back to ascending aorta. So this is simple form of uh, central VA ECMO with sternotomy, uh, mainly done with cardiac surgery. What is the advantage of VA ECMO? It's a physiological, better cannula can be used. So higher flow of oxygenated blood for coronary and cerebral circulation, easy during cardiopulmonary bypass, help in left ventricular unloading.
what is the disadvantage of the central VA ECMO? It's invasive, high risk for bleeding, high risk for infection and mediastinitis. Restornotomy may be needed for decannulation. This is a central VA ECMO. This, uh, we can see the blood ejecting from the heart is mixed with the blood uh, perfused uh, from the ECMO. So in this condition, if the heart ejecting the oxygenated blood, it will be mixed with the oxygenated blood from the ECMO. So there, is, there will be no affection for the perfusion for, uh, of the coronaries and cerebral circulation. So in short summary, what the difference between peripheral and central ECMO? Peripheral ECMO has lower perfusion to lower limb than central. So uh, lower limb ischemia more with peripheral. Peripheral ECMO has higher shear stress at bifurcation of femoral artery, so it induces vascular complication. Also, uh, another complication with peripheral ECMO has high oscillatory shear stress of the aortic arch and the femoral artery, so it leads to prone to develop vasculopathy. Peripheral ECMO has a ha lower harmonic index, decreases the, the volatility of the blood flow. However, Central ECMO is, a, is more invasive, more bleeding, more incidence of infection. So it's not that easy to have a central ECMO with open sternotum. How can we choose uh, cannula, cannula for VA ECMO? First, we should calculate predicted ECMO flow, which is equal to the surface area multiplying by flow index. And the flow index is equal to ECMO cardiac index to four 2.4 liter per minute per meter square. The second, Kala chose it should deliver flow without excessive pressure drop. What mean by pressure drop? Pressure drop uh, means that the blood uh, is travel from uh, through the cannula. The travel from higher pressure to lower pressure. As long as it travels, there shouldn't be excessive pressure drop. How can we? Uh, Calculate uh, pressure drop, it's equal flow multiplying by the resistance. Uh, for uh, then, we, the, the third item is it is venous cannula or arterial cannula. Venous cannula, the pressure drop should be less than 40 millimeter mercury, arterial cannula less than 100 millimeter mercury. And we here we can see the resistance of each cannula uh, determined by a curve. In this uh, y axis, there is a pressure drop, and in the x axis, this is a flow. So now, for example, we need flow 5 liter per minute, and we will go to choose venous cannula. As we mentioned, venous cannula pressure drop should be less than 40, and we need uh, 5 uh, flow. So actually, it will be 24 uh, French. For the another example, or oh, the other side, we need uh, arterial cannula and we need a pressure drop less than uh, 100 and the flow to be uh, uh, 5 liter so now it will be 21 so for, the, for our example we need 24 french venous or french cannula 21 for uh, return or arterial cannula if we go rapidly for the circuit there is independent variable which is adjusted by uh, the operator himself like a pump speed, sweep gas, uh, oxygen saturation from the ECMO side, and temperature. And dependent variable, for which uh, ECMO blood flow, as we mentioned before, centrifusion pump is preload and afterload dependent, so it changes depending on the uh, status, uh, uh, fluid status of the patient. Uh, oxygen saturation uh, from the drainage side, and the hemoglobin also measured uh, from the drainage side. For, uh, uh, for the uh, console of the ECMO, uh, this is the flow in liters and the RPM, the speed. Uh, this is the pressures uh, of the ECMO. I will, I will mention it uh, later on. Uh, oxygen saturation of the drainage cannula and temperature of uh, uh, the patient, uh, measured temperature of the patient. Uh, this is uh, the sweep uh, gas. Uh, this is uh, FiO2. Uh, from ECMO side, we give it FDO2 to uh, differentiate it from FiO2 of the ventilator. Uh, so it's a fraction of delivered oxygen in the sweep gas. It can adjust it by this knob. 
This is govern oxygenation inside the ECMO. This is CO2 uh, sweep gas to uh, control the CO2 inside the circuit. Uh, and this side, uh, this is column for the adult, and this is for the pediatric. Here, quick review for pressure throughout the circuit. For more details, you can go for the third lecture in the ECMO series. Uh, first is P van, which is the pressure inside the drainage cannula, and it determines the degree of pump suction. P in turn, it is the pressure generated by the pump to push the blood into the gas exchange. P R, it is the pressure inside the arterial return cannula, and the pressure, pump, pressure that pump generates to push the blood through the tube. Delta P is the pressure calculated value represent the pressure drop through the oxygenator and we mentioned before it increase if there is clotting or with aging with the oxygenator here is the mixed venous oxygenation of the circuit but we should know that's not a mixed venous oxygenator it is an oxygen saturation of the blood in the venous drainage tube enter the circuit it is not true uh, svo2 it is SVDO2, uh, uh, this D uh, reflected drainage, drainage tube or drainage cannula. Besides these references, I depend on Elsa Red Book and images in this lecture are drawn by Gihad Abdel Thank you, and you can put your questions in the comment.